morning interweb, let's world build. If you've ever watched The Gods Must Be Crazy or listened to Miriam Makeba's click song, it'll come as no surprise to you that in some languages, consonants sound like and if this is news to you, welcome to the wonderful world of non-pulmonic consonants, aka click consonants. So the IPA recognises five principal clicks, the bilabial, dental, postalveolar, palatal and lateral clicks. Surprisingly, most of us, regardless of language, use these sounds on a very regular basis without ever realising it. The bilabial click, ma, is a sort of lip smacking sound, almost like blowing a kiss except without pursing the lips. Ma, a ma. The dental click, ma, is that disapproving tutting sound we regularly make. Interestingly, in languages like Bulgarian and Greek, a dental click accompanied by a tipping of the head upwards means no. The post alveolar click, ah, 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 is commonly used to imitate the sound of a horse trotting. The lateral click, ah, 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 is used to call animals, like horses and dogs. Admittedly, the final click, the palatal click, ah, 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 isn't used all that often by English speakers. It's a kind of high pitched finger snapping sort of sound, produced by sucking the flattened tongue against the roof of the mouth and abruptly snapping it backwards. Ah, ah, ah. So hey, if I use four of these five clicks on a regular basis, does that mean I speak a click language? Eh, uh, no. English obviously isn't a click language. What clicks do occur in English occur paralinguistically. That is, whilst they are sounds and they do carry meaning, they don't go into making words. You aren't going to find clicks in an English dictionary. Of the over 2,500 languages surveyed by the World Atlas of Language Structures Online, only 1.8% were found to feature clicks phonemically. And, rather than being spread out around the world, they are all localised in one area, Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, not every African language is a click language, but every click language is African, with one notable exception. We'll get to you in a bit, Australia. Of all the African click languages, only a few have clicks as an original feature, namely all Khoi, Tu and Ka languages, found around the Kalahari Desert in present-day Botswana, Namibia and South Africa, and two East African Rift Valley languages, Hadza and Sandawe. These languages collectively, and despite their geographical separation, are known as the Khoisan languages. Some neighbouring Bantu languages like Xhosa and Zulu borrowed their clicks either directly or indirectly from a Khoisan language. That is, clicks arose naturally in the Khoisan languages and over time spread to the neighbouring Bantu languages. And there are marked differences between Khoisan clicks and Bantu clicks. Khoisan languages tend to feature large click inventories. Ta, for example, has, depending on how you're counting, between 45 and 115 contrastive clicks with 70% of their words beginning with a click. In contrast, Bantu languages tend to have smaller click inventories. For example, Sutu, spoken primarily in Lesotho in South Africa, has only three clicks. Furthermore, Khoisan languages only allow root initial clicks, whereas Bantu languages also allow syllable initial clicks. Interestingly, no known language ends a word or syllable with a click. But hang on, if the Bantu click languages borrowed their clicks from the Khoisan languages, where did the Khoisan languages get their clicks from? So it was once believed that the original human language may have had clicks. Studies done in 2003 found that speakers of Jutuan and Hadza have the most divergent mitochondrial DNA. Thus it was inferred that the primary genetic divisions of humanity are the Jutuan, the Hadza and everyone else. As two of the three groups spoke click languages, it was inferred that perhaps the original human language was a click language. Now this study was based on some pretty dubious assumptions. It assumed that the Hadza and Jutuan languages were never subject to language shift, that neither group borrowed clicks from other languages and that neither developed clicks independently of one another. There is quite literally no evidence that backs up the assertions made in the study. And, worse still, it's based on the outdated idea that so-called primitive people speak so-called primitive languages, which is just nonsense. Present-day linguists believe that clicks, given their relative complexity, arose quite late in the development of language. They are no more an ancient relic than any other sound. 
but how and why clicks developed still remains a mystery. Our best guess is that they evolved from a sequence of non-click consonant clusters. Taka, for example, could quite easily become ha. And there is actual real life evidence to back this up. In Nadao and Tonga, for example, a bilabial click, ma, is a common allophone of moi. And as a rule, languages lose clicks in a similar manner. Some East Kalahari languages are currently undergoing click loss. The lost click is often replaced by a consonant with a similar manner and place of articulation. For example, post alveolar clicks, ma, tend to mutate into velar stops, ka and ga. Languages borrow sounds from other languages all the time, but usually these sounds cross over as part of words. Consider the ja sound in measure and pleasure, all words borrowed into English from French. But when it comes to click languages, substitution is often more common than assimilation. Sounds are often borrowed and substituted directly into pre-existing words. Imagine cat suddenly becoming hat. How this occurred is, again, up for debate, but one possibility, at least in Hossa and Zulu cultures, is Hlonipa. Hlonipa is a system of ritual avoidance observed as a mark of respect by Hossa and Zulu wives, towards their male relatives by marriage. A sort of code of manners observed in the avoidance of names and similar sounding words. For example, if a Zulu's wife's father-in-law was called Nicholas Cage, she would not be permitted to say the words Nicholas, and cage, or any other word that sounds like Nicholas and Cage. To get around these restrictions, one could paraphrase. Instead of saying Nicholas Cage, one could say that actor from Kick-Ass and Lord of War. But that's just cumbersome. Instead, one could substitute sounds into the taboo words. Nicholas could become Nicholas, for example. This would mean no paraphrasing or inventing new words, and everyone would still understand everyone else while still being respectful. Once employed in this manner, clicks quickly became standardized, and given the link to the respect speech Hlonipa, they began to be used in a more general sense when speakers wished to sound polite, i.e. clicks spread. And this may well be how clicks transferred from the Khoisan languages into their neighboring Bantu languages. Spoken by the Lardil and Yankal tribes in Aboriginal Australia, Daman is the world's only non-African click language. Which is cool, but cooler still is the fact that it's an artificially constructed language. And it's said to have been created by a mythological figure in Dreamtime, a sort of golden age in Aboriginal mythology when the first ancestors were created. Traditionally, Daman was taught to the men of these tribes during their Lukuru and Warama initiation ceremonies. So quite literally, to become an adult, one had to learn a conlang. Now, these oftentimes gruesome ceremonies have been declining recently, and as a result, Daman is now functionally extinct. Rather ironically and forebodingly, Daman translates as being silent. Most click languages, African or otherwise, are falling silent. Many are endangered, some are just plain extinct, which really is a great shame. I mean, listen to this. This this is beauty. Good morning, interweb. To paraphrase John Green, mispronouncing words is my thing. Or rather, mispronouncing words is my thing because internet source material frequently lacks IPA transcriptions. I'm looking at you, Wikipedia, and your practical orthography. Being unable to learn how foreign words are pronounced is particularly debilitating if you, I don't know, want to make linguistics videos on the internet, you know, with like speaking in them. Also, learning some entirely new phonemic inventories over the course of a three week period probably didn't help matters. Anyways, all this is to say that if you, dear viewer, know how some of the foreign words used in this video are pronounced, please, please, please let me know down in the comments. As always, click the links on screen or in the description for more artifacts and content, like, and if you think I earned it, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.